This episode of the Blackstick Global Podcast is sponsored by Blackstick Global Passport. Join aspiring Black expats, expats, and repats, where you can build community, get resources, and gain support along your journey abroad. You're invited to join Blackstick Global Passport. Inside Passport, you'll find exclusive workshops on everything from expat taxes, financial planning, insurance, job boards, accountability check-ins, and more. More. You can even take Passport on the go with our app available for iOS and Android devices. Just click the link in the episode you're listening to or visit blacksitglobal.com and click on Passport. See you inside. I actually had a real future, not just like working at a job until I was ho- make it till hopefully 65 or, you know, whatever age you know, my black male body was going to make it to in America. Like, who knows? I, I was tired of waiting around to be a, another hashtag for a week until the next one happened. Close your eyes and imagine living a life you love, unapologetic and unbothered, free from daily microaggressions from Karens and Kens, free from the fear of police brutality and systemic racism. Wouldn't that feel amazing? Now open your eyes. What if I told you that it's possible? Hear inspiring stories and get the actual blueprints from brothers and sisters of the diaspora who are living out their wildest dreams abroad. You've heard the term, now be inspired by the movement. I'm Krishan Wright, and this is Blacksit Global. I am so excited for this episode of the Blacksit Global podcast because it gives me an opportunity to reunite with a member of our former Facebook group, someone whose energy just popped off the page and who is definitely a vibe. I am also delighted because on this platform, I love to amplify the voices and stories of Black expats. Also in that fabric is the voices and stories of Black men in this narrative. So I am delighted to welcome Michael Ruth, a.k.a. Black Yogi Abroad. Welcome to Black Sick Global, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a long time coming. I've always wanted to be on this platform because I think I have something to give and you're doing wonderful work and I really appreciate you providing this space for us to tell our stories. And I'm so delighted that you were open to accepting the invitation and you have a wonderful, wonderfully diverse background that I, I definitely want to dive into. And, you know, I did leave out that you are joining me today from Costa Rica. So, yes. <laughs> you know, I know we've had a lot of offline conversations about <laughs> Costa Rica, but definitely want to touch on that as well. So before we get into where you are today, why don't we start at the beginning? Because you hail from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yes, I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I come from a, you know, Navy background. I was in the Navy for 10 years. I was an information systems technician, traveled around the world. That was one of the first times that I got the travel bug because I saw and felt how the rest of the world was like treated me and saw me. And then I got back home and I was like, well, that, that didn't feel the same. So that was the beginning because, and I told myself then that I always wanted to leave the United States. And this was kind of before, like, I had been broken, right? This was just me wanting to, like, experience something different. And then went from IT background to the healthcare background. Uh, I was a surgical first assist that specialized in orthopedics and neurospine for over 10 years. I had a private practice, fought really hard to have a place at the table in that field in Oklahoma. And I realized that there wasn't a place for me at that table. Like I was the table, uh, like so many of us in the professional and, and uh, realm, uh, you know, we fight doubly hard to, to get half as much. And, uh, you know, I did that, went to nursing school, never practiced. Um, I, that just wasn't the path for me, but I'm a forever student. So I love the knowledge. I loved appreciating the, getting the knowledge. And that's helped me in this season of my life. Now I teach yoga all around the world. I'm a yogi. I teach Kemetic yoga and Smai Tawi, which is Egyptian yoga. And they're both African in origin. Those practices really resonate with me. They've helped me 
heal my body, heal my mind, reconnect with my spirit, reconnect with that ancestor within myself. And, you know, I love to share and help other specifically black and brown people to get introduced to these healing practices. I, I didn't mention that uh, back in 2019, I lost 100 pounds. Uh, Whoa. Yes, I lost 100 pounds because I'm living that life. In the medical field, being a caregiver, taking care of others, usually we're the worst ones to take care of ourselves. And, uh, you know, I was going through a lot mentally and emotionally, um, a lot of self-harming just behavior and not like physically, but just like I didn't love myself. I didn't think that I was worthy to, you know, have have happiness, have people that love me in my life, you know, things like that. So I was acting the way that my mental state was. One of those coping mechanisms was just like eating for me. And I eventually saw myself in my patient population. So that was 2019. In 2016, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I, I feel, I've lived many lives. Yeah, uh, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they found out that I had a, a tennis ball sized brain tumor. Um, oh. So that was like the kind of the wake up call for me. I didn't immediately change my behaviors and everything, but that was the wake up call to be like, okay. What do I really want in my life? What do I really want to do? And where do I go from here? And reclaiming my health was the start to all of this. Because once I reclaim my health, then I was in a better position to think clearly. And this isn't just about like moving abroad or anything. This is about anything in your life. The first step is reclaiming your health. You know, a lot of us in the black community, I know we're going to get talking on a whole bunch of stuff. But a lot of us in the black community, they like to talk about like reparations and things like that. Like we're waiting on the system to give us this money or whatever, some monetary value. The best reparations that I say that we can give to ourselves is reclaiming our health because then we're not tired. It allows us to do any and everything because we can think clearly. We're not uh, exhausted. We're not inflamed. We're able to move. We start to think for ourselves and be like, what do I really want in this life, in this lifetime with this body? It allows you to appreciate life more. So yes, mindfulness, health and wellness, seeing the world, absolutely doing things that are outside of your comfort zone. That's where the greatest growth occurs is when you're, when you're moving outside your comfort zone. But yes, those, those are like the main components of me and what, what I do to move forward. You know, one thing I say over and over again on the podcast is that it's important to be an active participant in designing your reality and even, you know, your future path versus being, you know, a passive participant. I think that really drives home with either living life by default instead of by design. Yeah. Yeah. And as you said, as it relates to food, food is a huge part of our culture and community. And, you know, my family originates from the South and there's, you know, some level of familiarity and then also, you know, in the great... Yes, comfort, right? There's that great documentary uh, series, uh, High on the Hog. Yes, it goes I love into that. food. And it's so interesting because I think today we have so many, especially in the States, so many food options, but yet even things that we think are healthy, when you read the label, it can be quite deceiving. Yeah. And I find that when I'm abroad, the ingredients are slightly different because the ingredients that are allowed in the States are illegal in certain countries. Exactly. And the freshness of the food. And so I find, and I'm so glad that you agree, that when you're able to really take a step back and take charge of your, your body, you know, physically as well as your mind, that that's where you get into this stage of enlightenment. And you're mm -hmm. able to see clearly and process foods and sugars and what the fog yeah. does and how that can change your body on a cellular level. Uh, I think part of that becomes this awakening that it yeah. sounds like for you and your story arc that had that tumor and then it started you on a path to a higher level of realization. Yes, it did. I like what you said about being an active participant in life. You know, so many of us are we're conditioned to just get slow drug through life and just like take whatever happens. I'm just like a victim of what the day already has in store. It's already written. Like my story is already written. Like, no, we write the narrative. 
and we need to reclaim that that ability. I call it like you know how we we tag each other in posts and things like that. So many of us untag ourselves out of life, and we just we take whatever comes. And yes, that that health that fog when you're not feeling good, it's easy to just say yes to whatever, whether it's to working that overtime that you know you you don't feel like working, whether it's relationships that aren't serving you any longer, staying in those too long, just saying yes to things that don't serve our purpose and serve our goals and serve our, our higher selves. But when we start feeling better about ourselves, it's easier to say, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. No, I'm not going to participate in this toxic behavior or this toxic environment. I'm going to do what I want to do that fills my cup, that makes me feel good, that makes me a better person. And, you know, traveling is one of that. But, you know, the U.S., America, that's all by design. That structure, that system, and it's even killing the ones who who made it. Yeah, they keep you on the hamster wheel, right? Because They 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 keep keep you on on the the hamster hamster wheel. wheel. You have no... You have no opportunity to say no or to say, you know, I really don't want to don't want to participate in that. And once I was able to think clearly, that was the start. That was the start. But, yeah, you're right. All of those ingredients and quote unquote food options that we have. It's amazing how much of it is not even like allowed in other countries, not even allowed. But then we have America telling us like, hey, come over here. I mean, that's why like commercials are so big. Like the things that are great for us don't have commercials. McDonald's spends like billions of dollars on commercials. You don't see one commercial about a watermelon or fruit. <laughs> that's so like, true. Because that stuff is good for us. But we have to be conditioned to want these things. And, you know, the ingredients are put in there for our bodies to get, you know, accustomed to them. And then it, then it becomes like this chemical imbalance within us. And then it, it becomes hard to get off that that cycle. And then myself coming from the healthcare field, I saw what's really going on. That's one of the reasons why I left, because I realized what an active participant I was in that cycle. Like, even though I was, you know, working, I was just putting Band-Aids on people. And I wanted to heal people before they got to the operating table, because I saw myself there. I was able to to reverse it, to heal things. And I wanted to do the same for specifically our community. Because we're we're usually the last on the totem pole to realize like what's really going on. Yeah, I think in the U.S., you know, there's a misnomer about the term healthcare system. It's um, a sick because, care system, <laughs> exactly right. It's designed to keep you sick, yet tell you that oh, these are the things you should be doing to keep healthy, and then yet we have a lifestyle that is especially as you compare it to prior generations more sedentary you know we have television we have social media those distractions right exactly and so it keeps us in this hamster wheel that prevents you from doing anything to the contrary because even on a physiological level you don't even have the the same level of energy you're taking in carbs you're having these highs oh, and no. lows oh yeah we're exhausted yeah. we're in a perpetual state of exhaustion and we're not even thinking about because we're not given the opportunity or privilege we're not thinking about like what's best for us we're just having to keep clocking in for that next day because we're, we're having to do just enough to make it to that next day and praying for the weekend. And it's not <laughs> yes. a, like, like we're exhausted by the time the weekend gets here, but then we don't do anything that's really for us to replenish what we've been giving for our entire lives. And so, you know, the weekend passes and then Monday comes back around and we're having to do it all over again. Not to mention what most of us go through in the workplace you know, making ourselves small just to clock in and having to go through that like spiritual and mental trauma. There's a lot, there's a lot going on that's by design. Like, yeah. And you touched on it earlier when you talked about the being the table, it's like managing through these dynamics that are at play systemically in order to keep things as the status quo, this code switching microaggressions, all of these things that we encounter on a day-to-day basis that it, it feels, especially at this phase and stage of my life and, and career, 
is that, you know, sometimes you encounter these things and it's like this hyper vigilance that you have to stay ready because you don't know when the next whatever it is comes. When you look at your body, that changes your body, that changes your psyche. If you're always on a state of high alert, you're sending out all of these endorphins, this fight or yeah. flight and overwhelming your body with hormones that then has all of these other counter actions. And then you look at things like, heart disease and high blood pressure and all of these other things that our community tends to over index. Preventable. Yeah. And they're preventable. And that's the thing that I think is a, a one, a gift that when you make the decision to lax it, Mm -hmm. that you are able to look at things with a different set of eyes. What I hear in your story is the benefit, not only of the physical distance, but the internal transformation and the healing. So what was that process like for you in terms of the internal work that has gotten you to the place where you are today? The internal work, well, once I started getting deeper into yoga and specifically like comedic yoga and like reconnecting with the ancestors and things like that, I'll tell you this story. I used to have a thing about bacon, like me and bacon, we were, we were like this. And, you know, I would overeat and things like that. And I'll be completely full. But it was like bacon on the table. Like I made sure that it was there. And I used to say this. I was like, my ancestors didn't go through all they went through just for me to leave food on the table. But when I reclaim my health, now I say my ancestors didn't go through all that they went through for me to treat my body like I was treating it. They didn't go through everything just so I could consume trash. And I realized that My body belongs and my life belongs to more than just me in this lifetime. Like it belongs to everybody that came before me and it belongs to everybody that's going to come after me. And I I tell people that like we're already ancestors and we need to act accordingly. Just how we call upon people's names for strength and wisdom and guidance in the in the past. Like there's already a future that's being played out where people are already calling on our names here in the present on our energy for guidance, strength and wisdom. And we just need to start acting accordingly so it was it was like that transition of you know me finding balance and and reconnecting with with my past and and you know as black people in america we have these severed through lines of our life that has connected us and once i started reconnecting those and seeing my true past and then seeing that i actually had a real future not just like working at a job until I was ho- make it till hopefully 65 or, you know, whatever age, you know, my black male body was going to make it to in America. Like, who knows? I, I was tired of waiting around to be a- another hashtag for a week until the next one happened. You know, you were talking about how the body holds all this in. There's another wonderful book called The Body Keeps Score. And it's how we internalize trauma not just trauma that we've gone through, but trauma from the past, you know, from our ancestors and, you know, forward. And I I saw that working in the surgical field. I saw how inflammation manifests within the body. And that's another thing that's killing our community is this inflammation from stress and anxiety and depression and anger. I was always angry and, and just waiting around, waiting around for like, when is it my turn? And as a Navy vet, I'm also a 9-11 vet. I was stationed in the Pentagon during 9-11. So I, I know what it's like to live with PTSD and to live with this anxiety and to live with like this depression and always feeling on, like always feeling on. And I was just exhausted and it was just tearing me up on the inside. And that's what a lot of us go through in America. And we don't know how to articulate it, how to articulate like what's really going on with us. We don't know why we always feel like this, this sense of like we're wearing this, this coat of anger or why certain things trigger us and things like that. But once I left, I immediately felt this sense of relief. Like I I had been holding this albatross around my neck and it was just like, it was almost like the ancestors just lifted it off of me and it was like, okay, we, let's take this. You don't need to carry that burden any longer. I immediately felt a, a change in my body, mentally, physically, emotionally. You know, I met one woman who she was in a wheelchair. I forgot exactly what she, what her ailment was, but she was in a wheelchair. She arrived to Costa Rica in a wheelchair. And then within like two months, she was up walking and everything. And it was, it was like inflammation that had been just in her body 
she didn't know doctors, you know, the doctors she was going to couldn't understand it because that system wasn't made for us. Like we are victims of that system and they don't realize how that inflammation and those feelings and emotions just sit in the body. But once we're able to, to let that go, you can see, you can feel the difference in your, your laughter, the way that you look at the world, like the world becomes open and you, you get a real sense of like what freedom is. In America, we're told what freedom is, but we were born into bondage. Like we really don't know the, the true ideal of freedom. It's like a prison warden telling the prisoner who was born in prison what freedom is, but he's never experienced it. They've never experienced it. So once we get out and we're able to breathe again or relearn how to breathe for the first time, I, I had to learn how to, I mean, as a yoga instructor, I teach breathing techniques. I had to learn how to breathe again because in America, my whole life, I had been holding my breath physically and, you know, literally like in, in life because I wasn't able to fully expand in this body, this black body that I have, especially being a black male. I can't be fully who I am in America. We as black people can't be fully who we, we can't be fully black in America because it's dangerous. Exactly. Exactly. It's dangerous. So we get conditioned. We get through the generations. We get told by our parents, by our grandparents, how to act, how to minimize our blackness in order to survive. Another instance, I had to teach myself how to walk with my head up again. Because I had been conditioned to walk with my head down. And, I, you know, that's something that I still am working through because, you know, we get taught even in, like in the workplace, like we can't be fully black in the workplace. Just think about like job interviews. Like we have to we have to think about like, oh, do I, which voice do I use? Like I can't, you know, tell certain jokes or something like I can't wear my hair in a certain way. Like that's traumatic to our soul, to our black soul, because we have to basically kill a part of ourselves in order to fit within a system that really doesn't even want us there. Like nothing in America was made for us except the prison system and the slave trade. Those are the only two things that were made with us in mind, like where they really sat down at the table and was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? Getting off the plantation is the best thing that I think black people can do for their health, for their well-being, for their like all the leads, financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of it. I love that. All the leads. All, all the leads. <laughs> and, and not just for the present, but like I said, our lives belong to more than just us. We need to do it for those who couldn't do it before us, who couldn't or wouldn't do it, whatever reason. We need to do it for those in the future because we need to start building the world that they deserve to live in. We need to do it for them, not only for ourselves, but for them, because they deserve it. Just like we deserve these lives that we are creating now. And, you know, it comes back to health. We deserve to be healthy. And then we, in turn, we deserve to be happy as well. Absolutely. Going back to the ancestors, for each one of us that are here today, knowing that there are countless ancestors who have died, who yeah. risked and faced a lot of atrocities, but still had faith and endured, we, each of us are a walking miracle. They had so much strength and, and we're not alone because for us to be here, we had to come from somebody. For us to be here, we had to come from somebody. They had to come from somebody. They had to come from somebody. You know, there's been instances just in like mindfulness throughout the day and things like that, where I'll look up at the sun and just feel its, its power and its energy and I'm like, this is the same sun. This is the same energy that my ancestors have, have felt. And that gives me comfort and that gives me strength. Like if I'm feeling a certain way or, or struggling a little bit, I'm like, you know what? They probably looked up at the same sun and was like, there's got to be something better. And, and we're, we have to survive to, to make it there because, it, you know, it may not be right now, but I need to survive so the next generation can have something better. Like we need to, we need to do the same, but yes, we need to do the best for ourselves because we deserve it because somebody before us was doing the work for us to be here. And we need to honor them by honoring ourselves, honor their struggle and what they went through by doing the best that we can do, by being the best that we can be, by not allowing people to treat us any kind of way. 
just because you're in a current situation doesn't mean you have to stay in that situation. We have so much power and we can, we can utilize that. We can use that. That's what I love about traveling because it, it shows you like what you're capable of. It pushes you to see who you really are and you're able to create who you want to be because in that system in America, like we're never really given a moment to really ask ourselves, who do, who do I want to be? Like, what do I really want to do in life? And that's why like during pandemic, a lot of people had some transitions. You're like, wait a minute. Like, you mean I don't have to be at the office, you know, going through all this stuff. I could be at home, like working. And then yeah. that was like the start of, of a lot of people's transition. A like, lot. It was a wake up call because it caused, first of all, a monumental stop. We have never encountered a full on stop on a global level. And then there was the shift from shift workers who then became essential workers yeah. it's yeah. like oh we're gonna call it a new name now you're essential you know what all of that is like having us come in to the office and stuff like that it's about control they lost a sense of control when they couldn't see us they didn't know what we were doing like there's no reason for us to be in the office like that and what it was was we were starting to reclaim our time two of our most precious assets that we have as human beings in this lifetime is our health and our time. Once you reclaim your health, you can do anything. But once you reclaim your time, you become a master of your own destiny, creator of your own universe. Nobody can tell you what to do, when to do it, that you've been on your lunch break as an adult for 31 minutes instead of 30 minutes. Like even that is traumatic to the soul. Like I'm a grown person. <laughs> like I got to ask permission to go to the bathroom. We're not supposed to be living like that. No, like but that when you think about education, right, we teach for the test, right? So everything is designed to do this rank and file. Everybody does the same. Everybody, you know, fits into this hole. And yeah. if you are the square that is trying to, you know, we're trying to get you in a circle, but you, why are you shaped like yeah. a square? You know, it, it prevents creativity, it prevents individualism, it, it prevents motivation, it prevents free thinking, it prevents us from experiencing what the rest of the world has to offer. What it does is just keep our head head down and we don't look up because if we look up, then we might see like, wow, like this is crazy. And I think that pause that pandemic gave us, a lot of people were like, wow, you know what? That was crazy. Like what we had been doing and it wasn't normal. I think I want to create a new normal for myself and it's going to be one that benefits me. You know, people are getting these remote jobs and, and things like that. And <laughs> like it, I've never seen so many black remote workers. And, yes, uh, yes. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful because we're reclaiming our time. People are finding out what their passions are, like what their goals are, what they want to do with their time in this lifetime. Like they want to create, they want to be happy. They want to have meaningful relationships that, and I'm not talking about like, you know, spouses and things like that, but just like people in your circle who make you a better you because we're like we don't have a lot of time here we don't have a lot of time in this in this thing no and, it's about and, authentic connection absolutely. right and you can get it without you know and i love that that train of thought is you can achieve that without having to be in physical proximity you know i've yeah. connected with you know a lot of of people online and offline in this this journey and my circle has grown exponentially yes. in the past two years. And I have not, you know, with the exception of my trip to Costa Rica, I have pretty much left home. And they're, and they're probably quality. Yes, the quality of exactly. The and you're realizing that, like, the people who you were hanging around with, like, so I've connected with so many expats, black expats, and they're eagles. They're soaring. Like they're, they're out here and they're, they're just traveling and doing the things that, that they want to do. And it takes something inside that other people don't have that haven't done that yet. Like we've been conditioned to, to speak fear in each other's plans as well. And that keeps us on the plantation even longer. It keeps Crabs us in, in the barrel. system. Yes. Yes. Like what? <laughs> Why do you want to move to that country? They're not doing anything over there. Why? You, it's so dangerous over there. Or, you know, you're going to eat that food. Like you're talking, but you're drinking Dr. Pepper. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know? or the language or 
you're going to leave us? Like, yes. <laughs> you're going to leave us? Like, oh, you're just going to leave us here? Like, yeah, yeah I'm going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can, Deuces. You know, you can, save you your you coins, get a passport, get a plane yeah. ticket. Like, it's that simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, we've been conditioned. There's been a whole lot of conditioning on us as as black people to to stay. I, I keep referencing the plantation as America, but that's like what it is. They don't really want us there, but they use us while we're there. They use oh, our yeah. brilliance. They use our genius. They use our innate wisdom. They use our energy. They use our talents, and then they discard us. I, I say like like it's it's dangerous for us now, but if we continue to take our like black dollars and everything out, then they will really have no more use for us, right? And then that's when things will really get dangerous. So I just say like let's get out. There's some brilliant, vibrant communities out here of some black expats and they are really loving life. They're no longer just surviving, like we're thriving. There's a, there's a big difference between surviving and thriving. I got tired of surviving and I wanted to thrive. And I, I knew that there was something bigger and better out there. I knew that there was, there was a place where I could get a full breath, where I could fully be myself and, and other people were there doing the same thing. Like you look at life different when you come in contact with these people because they have the same light in their eyes that you have and you can recognize that. They have the same dreams and visions. You know, it's they have their own individual dreams, but there's that collective community. And when you break down the word community, you have like this common unity. And when you have people that are like that, like the brilliance shines so brightly uh, and you can feel it like it becomes the sun. Like it, it's it's that powerful and you just want more and more of it. And, and nothing can drag you back to that life that you had like people ask me all the time when are you coming back I'm like eh, it's you know that's that's not really an option that's not really an option you know once you've tasted true freedom there's nothing that can pull you back it's just like you know some of our ancestors when they escaped slavery like nothing was going nothing they would choose death over going back you know i'm not saying that I, it is quite drastic enough for me like that but like there are other options out there than, than, you know, going back to America. Not to say that I haven't had those because when I first left, you know, I dealt with all that anxiety and everything. And this is something that, that a lot of black expats don't talk about is the mental aspects and the emotional aspects of leaving what we have known for our entire lives. It's just like prisoners when they leave prison. They were institutionalized and conditioned and they, they experienced this level of anxiety and, and things and PTSD. I, I call it uh, like post-traumatic slave disorder. And I had to deal with that. There have been many nights when I was like laying in my bed alone crying. And I'm like, you know, this stuff needs to be needs to be talked about and we need to have support about these things. So that's another thing that I, that I like to you know bring up and talk about. Not that I like to, but it's something that needs to be brought up and be talked about and have support groups for this thing because the journey doesn't stop just when we buy our ticket and get to another country because we actually have to acknowledge what the hell we just went through because it's very, it's very big and it, it's, it did a lot of damage to us mentally and emotionally and spiritually. And we need to, we need to actually feel that and put words to it and articulate it in order to heal that you have to feel it. You can't just, party it away in, in playa like we, we we still have to do work yeah and um, i think that the plane ticket and the physical change in proximity doesn't erase to your point you know what actually happened and i think it becomes that much harder when yeah. the system that you left makes a concerted effort to deny that it ever happened exactly and so you walk in this space of, okay, I know this happened. I, I'm encountering this, but they're saying, oh, that, that's not what happened. Do you really think that that was what it oh, was? Oh, oh, and nobody likes to be gaslit. Like, no, that's, just, that's straight, exactly. straight gaslighting. And, we, and it, it, then it, it makes us like second guess ourselves 
and that's another way we've been conditioned is to to second guess our our true innate wisdom and knowledge of ourselves our beautiful black selves to second guess basically have like imposter syndrome and to second guess yeah like that trauma that that we went through when it was very real and it's very active and it continues it will continue because we'll bring that same mindset with us in our bags we'll pack it real nice into our luggage and just bring it with us it's going to manifest in certain ways just like that stress and anxiety uh, that we were going through there manifest within our bodies in certain ways that trauma that we still carry that's within our like self it will manifest in different ways later on down the line whether it's you know we get triggered by a certain situation or somebody talks to us a certain way or something like that um and we like snap at them and then we like really don't know why you know it, it goes back to that and a lot of these things are interconnected and heal it's like this string on the tapestry and you once you begin pulling that string and once you become intentional about your own healing like it becomes this domino effect and you'll see how all these things are are connected people ask me all the time like oh you're having a wonderful vacation like this isn't a vacation it's a journey of healing that just happens to be done in wonderful locations all around the world <laughs> uh so like i'm still out here doing the work and you know having fun and being purposeful about you know being in environments and being around people who strengthen me and who make me better and who also like want to do the work that I'm doing. Right, you're in Costa Rica and you know yes. I know people can't see but you have a, a beautiful backdrop behind you. Is Costa Rica going to be your permanent destination or do you see yourself continuing to evolve and kind of go where you feel you're called? This world is my home. Well, I I carry my home within me. like home home is within me but also this globe this planet is is my home and yeah people ask me all hey are you are you leaving permanently are you are you moving there permanently are you you know wherever I'm at and I'm like no I'm here today and if if the spirit calls me to another place I love Costa Rica because it's so healing for me like the the environment is healing and you know the beaches and the mountains and the air um even the like the water has like this healing quality to it but no i i like to move and whether that it's like that navy in me i get bored kind of not easily but there's just so much of the world to see and experience and like i want all of it like i want i want all of it there's no reason to to go so no like i my life is in two suitcases two or three suitcases I'll say two like I'm it's in three right now. I just I learned my lesson like I had to pay 200 and almost $300 at the gate. Not the gate but the ticketing place because I accidentally had an extra bag cuz I bought too much I acquired too much stuff and yeah, I learned my lesson so I'm trying to downsize the two suitcases. <laughs> This world is my home and so I'll be here for a couple months. and then after here i'm actually going to peru for at least 3 months i'll be an instructor at a yoga teacher training resort in the jungle yeah like this is this is my life that i've and it's not that i wanted to ever go to peru but the owners saw my uh yoga practice online and reached out to me and that's just like the universe opening doors and i always say that once you start taking like just action steps towards your true passion and your your vision for yourself once you start taking action steps towards it then that vision that life that you want will start taking steps towards you and before you know it you'll be there and you'll wake up one day on the beach somewhere and you'll be like how did i get here that's why like journaling is really important to me because it records those steps that i took in the past cuz it's so easy for us to forget like so much that we've done in the past and you know we we like to focus on the one or two negative things that happen within our month or things like that but i like to journal from month to month and go back every full moon and and read like what i've accomplished and i realize that i've accomplished so much within the month and those one or two you know quote unquote bad things that happen like they really weren't that bad 
And it helps me realize like, oh, I can do this. Like, I'm, I'm really awesome. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be going out to Peru. And then from there, you know, I don't know. That's the Where? best part is like yeah. the unknown is that you can look around and you can say, yeah, you know what? I did that. You know, yeah. I'm doing the thing. I, I think that is the you know, at least, you know, from where I sit observing, that holds a lot of personal pride and accomplishment. Yeah, it builds self-confidence. It mm-hmm. builds self-confidence. And we come from a world where self-confidence is not a thing that we're allowed to cultivate. Like, we're not allowed to say, you know what? Yeah, I did that. Because there's always somebody there that's ready and willing to chop us down to say, well, who do you think you are? Who, who, like, you're not that special. Like, yeah, we are that special. Like we are that special and the rest of the world sees that. And once you're free, once you're allowed to breathe, once you're allowed to expand yourself to the greatest width of your potential, like you can see that too. You look at yourself in the mirror differently. And it's, it's also that, that domino effect. You take one trip, one short trip, let's say you don't want to go like halfway around the world. Just take a short little trip, you know, two day, three day to somewhere, wherever's close to the closest you know, border, even if you have to start within the states, because some people haven't been off their block, start small. And and gradually that will build up confidence and your fears will, because there's been a lot of times, not a lot of times, but some instances where I get dropped off with my luggage. I have no idea where I'm at. Like the taxi dropped me off in the wrong place. The fear sets in and it's like, what did you do? Why, why did you do this? Why, why are you, you know, this wouldn't happen back home. And I'm like, no, this wouldn't have happened back home. But there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of other things that could have happened back home. You know, at least I'm not being hunted like by the local police department or, you know, at least I'm able to manifest the life, basically any life that I want to without somebody coming to, you know, steal the light from my life or from my vision, from what I'm wanting to accomplish for myself. So being In the world, it also allows you to see how small you are at the same time. Not small, but it gives you a sense of your place in the in the global scheme of things, the universal scheme of things. You can see how small you are, but you can also see how great you are, how big you are, how beautiful you are, how extraordinary you are, how blackness is appreciated around the world and not seen as something to be feared like it's something that that's honorable in in various places around the world and you know i've been to some places where i've I've been treated like royalty actually like royalty and that sticks with you and there's something inside of us inside of you that once you experience that you reconnect with it because that's where we come from. And we say, you know what, this kind of feels familiar and I want to continue this. I want to be in environments and around people that allow this to happen, that allow me to feel this for myself because that's where it comes from. First, you have to feel it within yourself and, uh, you know, traveling, traveling allows that. It also allows you to be by yourself sometimes. We're so afraid of the silence. We're afraid of of being alone, of being isolated. And um, traveling, especially solo travel, allows you that time and space to go within yourself and ask yourself some real questions like, who do I want to be? Or the first question is, who am I? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> who am who, I? Who and, who am I? Yeah. And then you ask yourself that question and it goes to another question automatically. Do I like who I am? Do I like who I've been? That takes you to another question. If I do or do not like who I am or who I've been, what am I going to do about it? Then you come to a point in the road where it's like, okay, what am I going to do about it? Either I'm going to continue on this path that I have been or I'm going to go on a different journey. And I'm going to rewrite this narrative that is, that's called my life. When you sit there and confront all those things and it 
can be messy. You can be in a space of the messy middle. You can feel feelings of resistance and not wanting to go there because you're not ready to confront it. But I think the steps that you laid out are practical and accessible for people to, especially when they have that time, you know, can carve out the time, whether they're listening, you know, to this episode, which I'm, I'm quite sure will be played more than once because you've <laughs> dropped so many gems and so many moments that resonate with me on, on so many different levels. I just have so much to talk about. And this comes from, I came from a, an, a world, a society where my voice, I was told my voice didn't matter. And so I kept things to myself and reclaiming my health. I keep going back to that because it's the start of everything. I was able, I reclaim my voice and I realized what I had to say does matter because I matter. And I realized that what I had to say was important and vital. And I would always tell myself, like, who wants to listen to like what I have to say? Like, but I, I have, I used to didn't think I was a good writer or anything like that, but I've always had people tell me like, you're, you're a great writer. Like you should be writing things like whatever it is. And so I've been, you know, trying to to write more and to, I used to be fearful. I used to, like, if you would ask me in the past, hey, you want to be on this podcast? No, I don't want to be on the podcast. Like, who's going (laughs) to, who's going to listen to me? But now I get on these things, I can't shut up. And like, I I start. (laughs) Well, I already, I already know. I mean, we'll have, we, you know, we talk offline, but uh, I already know we're going to have a YouTube live and we've already talked about some other collaborations. uh, uh, because, you know, there's so much wisdom and knowledge it, that you possess. And you're right. You know, you have the freedom, the the space to be creative, to lean into that, to tap into it yeah. and really get that that self-discovery that drives what you're so passionate about. And so as we start to wrap, where can people find you, Michael? They can find me just on Instagram at, at, at Black Yogi Abroad. I'm at Michael Ruth on, on Facebook. I do have a virtual yoga studio called Sun People Yoga, and that's S-U-N, like the melanin sun-kissed skin of black and brown people. We specialize in making these healing mindfulness practices available affordably to the communities and people that need them most, which are the black and brown communities. We do virtual, we put a pause on virtual classes right now just so we can focus on some other things, but you can still follow us on there. Just catch me out in these streets and, uh, you know, I go around the world teaching yoga and uh, I'd love to have any and everybody in my classes. I, I love to share my practices. I love to share my story, my wisdom, because it is somebody else's survival guide. Like Jay-Z said, like Hove did that. So hopefully you won't have to go through that. And I like to tell people it's been a joy and a journey. And I like every day I wake up and I'm like, this is my life. Like, this is what I do. Like, how did this even happen? But it happened because I, I believed it could happen. I wanted it to happen. I knew I deserved more. And I started taking action steps. And that's what it takes. Like, don't let people say you can't. Don't let yourself say you can't. You can do whatever you want to. If if you don't know how to get there, ask somebody. Start doing research about it. Like, there's plenty of resources that you can tap into. There's plenty of people out here who want to share their wisdom with you, who want to get you off of the plantation. Like, I feel like Morpheus sometimes from the Matrix. Like, <laughs> right? I, 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 I want to get as many people out of the Matrix as I can. Yes. Um, that's what I want to do. I really appreciate this, this opportunity. Like you are doing such magnificent work, making this platform available and allowing us to use our voices, our newfound voices to get our stories out to the world. It's so important. It helps me. It helps other people. Like just being able to talk about things helps you process. Like we don't have a lot of people to talk about this this journey of especially black sitting journey for people who want to do this in in the future. Like people are going to be listening to this like 50 years in the future. It's going to be available and they're going to be like, wow, like 
just how we look at stories about the great migration uh, and things like that. And they're like, wow, they really did some, like people are going to be looking at it and, and listening to it and be like, wow, they, they really, you know, they had some strength and they had some wisdom and they, it's going to give people the, the push that they need to make the decisions that they need to do for themselves. So thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for being such an incredible guest. And I am so honored that our paths have crossed and am so delighted to be able to witness, to bear witness to your continued growth and evolution. So thank you. It's great to see Black people like winning. I want to see, I want to see more of us out here. Thank you for listening to the Black Seat Global Podcast. For more information on today's episode, be sure to visit our website at blackseatglobal.com. It's not only possible to live out your dreams unbothered and in full color, it is your birthright. Are you trying to sort out health plans, banking, VPN, and other connectivity for your move abroad? Well, have no fear. We've got you with the Move Abroad Starter Kit. Get yours today at blacksitglobal.com slash resources. That's blacksitglobal.com slash resources.